um, I'd like to have a discussion. Um, on March 21st, two officers from the Bladderboro Police Department responded to a report of a sick dog at the Crow Lot. The incident ended with an officer shooting the dog on the playground of the Green Street School. On March 23rd, Captain Mike Fitzgerald began an internal investigation of the incident. Uh, the town later received two formal complaints on March 28th and then again on March 29th. In the course of the investigation, Captain Fitzgerald reviewed call details, examined the site of the incident, spoke with the officers, spoke with the animal control officer, and spoke with uh, two of the citizens involved. Now I'm going to turn the discussion over to Chief Gene Rin to discuss their findings. Uh, as a result of the, uh, thank you for the introduction and, and, and the summary. Uh, as a result of the internal investigation, you know, it was truly unfortunate that, and we're sorry that we had to, uh, the police took the action and took the light of animal. Some areas of the department that the department identified as needing, uh, needing work uh, and will be addressed with all staff members. One is that more thought and effort should have been placed into dealing with, uh, with the after effects making immediate contact with citizens in the area as the officers felt they did not have the time and opportunity to explain what was going on uh, prior to the actual shooting. Given the time and opportunity, the officers should have assisted citizens out of the play area, but the officers did recognize that the citizens were self-evacuated prior to, to the shooting. Uh, the officers should have followed up with Green Street School staff and made them aware of the incident, and there's always a possibility that they could have had dispatch call the school. Uh, it appears that department officers may have had contact and or incidents involving this animal in the recent past or immediate, immediately before this incident. Um, and the information was not properly forwarded to the animal control officers for, for follow-up. Uh, normally what happens when officers get involved in any animal complaints, they change the, their, their incident number into the animal control officers. So when Kathy comes into work the following day or the following days, uh, she'll look at those reports and see if there's action that needs she needs to take. Um, the department has reached out to the CPCC, the Citizen Police Communication Committee, to review and discuss this incident. Their next meeting is scheduled for uh, May 15th at 5:15. The place for that uh, um, meeting is just still being determined. Um, all these issues will be discussed with staff. We'll have some training uh, surrounding these. Thank you, Chief. Uh, normal protocol would be to uh, hear from the board, uh, but at this point we will uh, take comment uh, from citizens. Uh, if you would uh, raise your hand and I'll recognize you, you can come up to the microphone, state your name and the town that you're from, and direct your questions towards the chair, and uh, we'll make sure that the right person appropriately answers the questions for you. Uh, certainly, we want to sure we maintain a civil tone here. Uh, an unfortunate incident happened with a dog. Uh, the police department certainly acknowledges there were some shortcomings uh, that they will be addressing. I appreciate their honesty and candor in that. And so having said that, uh, if you raise your hand, I will recognize you to come up and speak. Yes. Uh, you can leave that right on there. Uh, that's that's not that's actually for the TV audience. You can tilt it down. That's what I was trying to do. Oh, okay. And please state your name and the town that you're from. I'm Annie Guyon. I live in New Fame, but I'm the executive director of the Women's County Humane Society. And I appreciate you putting this item on the agenda this evening. Uh, as an agency that contracts with the town of Brattleboro to hold stray animals and one with the right and authority to investigate allegations of animal cruelty and neglect, I'm here to fulfill our public duty to understand this incident and ensure that proper procedures are followed. But it was not humane in our opinion to shoot this animal. Uh, that is justifiable if the officer is in imminent danger, but there are conflicting reports on whether this dog was dangerous or not. Uh, I have requested to view the files on this incident, and so far I've been told that they're not to be made public because it's a personnel issue, which I understand. Um, and Patrick did share with me today the investigation memorandum. Uh, but we, as the Humane 
society would really like to see um, the eyewitness statements and know the facts around the case instead of relying on some of the rumor and conjecture that's going around town. Um, some of the questions we have and reports we'd like to see, we'd like to know was a necropsy done on the dog, and we'd like to see any tests and all tests that were done on the dog. Did anybody check for a microchip? Um, as Chief Ren did mention, it appears that there were incidents, reports of this dog prior to the shooting, and those incidents did not go to Kathy Jones, from my understanding, and so there were multiple chances to possibly get this dog in safely and evaluate the dog. Um, and I'd like to see those reports and see if um, the dog was ever reported as aggressive. Uh, we'd like to see and understand the written protocol for officers when they're dealing with a stray dog. Um, and what time did the call come in the day the dog was shot, and what time did Kathy Barrow's clock out? Uh, also, the press release from the PD stated that the dog was dying on the ground, but the investigation memorandum states that the dog growled at the officer while backing up. Um, an aggressive, aggressive animal does not back up, but comes forward. Um, so we would like to understand, was the dog shot because it was aggressive or because it was sick? And if the latter, it would have been more humane to capture the animal and euthanize it. Um, if the dog was thought to be aggressive, why didn't the officers evacuate the area prior to shooting the dog? And how close was the officer to the dog? Um, also, according to the investigation memorandum, this is a quote, officers responded to an incident involving a breed of animal that has a reputation for its unpredictability and is being a breed that is trained and known to bite and not release causing severe injuries to the victim. End quote. Statistics show that when agencies attempt to identify a breed by sight and not by DNA, they are wrong 75% of the time. The caller and the officer have no proof that this dog was a pit bull. And I have to ask the question, if the dog had been a golden retriever, would the officer have shot that dog? We go down the road of judging a dog based on how it looks, how far are we from judging a human based on how it should look. The officer on duty determined that it was not safe to allow the dog to be unsecured, but he made no attempt to capture the dog in a way that a trained animal control officer would. I contend that this officer did not have the skills or the tools necessary to secure a scarred, scared and starving animal. I have no doubts, personally having worked with Kathy Girls for four years now, that if she had been allowed to respond to this call, the dog would have come to the Humane Society very much alive. And we would have done everything in our power as a humane agency to evaluate the dog, provide proper veterinary care, and put him up for adoption. Um, so I did speak with Patrick today. He said that he and Barb are satisfied with the police investigation. And I'm here to say that Wyndham County Humane Society is not satisfied with the investigation. And we're requesting either access to the reports and information I mentioned earlier, or that the select board request an independent investigation of the incident. Thank you. We'll uh, release any documents that we can release. Some documents cannot be released to you. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. Thank Great. you. Thank you. <clears throat> I just wanted to say, uh, I'm Bradley Hamilton. I'm the president of the board of directors for the Wyndham County Humane Society. And uh, we just wanted to let the public know that we are taking this action and we support um, Annie, our executive director, in, in the questions and uh, procedures that she's going forward with. Thank you. And just again to let you know that this will be going to the CPCC uh, on May 15th, where uh, we will also be hearing back from them upon their decision and what they've decided. Uh, I need to see a hand if someone else wants to speak. Yes. And please state your name and the town that you're from. I'm Isabel Matuicha, and I'm from Thoroughborough. Mm -hmm. And I'm here because I was there um, the day that this happened. And I've put out to the reformer and to I Thoroughborough um, sort of my account of what has happened. And I'm here because I am not satisfied with the investigation findings as well, and am requesting that um, an independent and impartial investigation be done. Uh, and I feel that the only way that uh, changes will be made to the system is if an impartial and independent investigation is done. Um, and then from that, there are specific procedures that will be required and then implemented by our police department. I feel like when I first called the police department and I talked
chief friend, and you told me that um, you can't have a Torah call for everything. I agree with that. However, I, I firmly believe that it's unacceptable to have a system that will allow a police officer to discharge a firearm on an elementary school playground while children and faculty are inside the building and have not and, ha and not have any communication at all whatsoever with the school. Um, I feel like the fact that we were told this dog is not aggressive when our group first talked with the officers up at the pool lot, uh, there was no hint of warning in their voices about a potentially dangerous situation. It all feels extremely irresponsible to me. I never once felt threatened by this animal, and it felt reckless to me that this officer minutes before was unable to communicate that the dog may be a threat and then have this officer come down to the playground holding a shotgun in his hand. And at that, I, I still feel like none of it really makes a whole lot of sense to me. Um, and I never imagined that after having a conversation with them earlier at the cruel cool lot that this would have been the end result. Um, I also wanted to find out in the um, investigation findings, it said that there were two citizen complaints. However, I know that my neighbor uh, went down to the police department and made, I guess maybe technically it wasn't a complaint, but it was a statement regarding uh, the incident. And she was told that her statement would be um, presented during the investigation um, to be um, considered. And I don't see anywhere in the findings, at least that I was able to um, look through, that her statement was considered. And um, I just want to, I want to read to you, if that's OK, the email that my neighbor sent to me. Uh, two days after this incident happened. Um, if that's okay, I'm going to read it to you. Please. So I had asked her to send me an email um, as shortly after it happened because I wanted her to remember things as um, precisely as she could. And so this is what she wrote to me, and I think that this is critical for people to know. Um, Walking from the park to Green Street School, I saw an officer in the woods who said he was the dog whisperer looking for a pit bull. Then he said, it's not aggressive, but don't go close to it. Brought kids down to Green Street School playground where they were on the swings. Saw a brown pit bull walk across the playground, skirting at a distance past us and up onto the bank where it sat a little ways up. Left the kids with neighbors and went up to the park to tell the officers that a dog was down on the bank alongside the playground. No cruisers at the park, so I looked a little, gave up, and started walking down the path. A little ways down, halfway, I heard a loud bang and then animal yelping. A few more steps, and I saw to my right a dog bleeding, crawling, and an officer with a long gun. The officer was facing the dog, and I was somewhat behind the dog on the hillside, worrying that I might be in the shot line and predicting what would happen next, another shot at the animal. I covered my eyes, turned away, and ran toward the front of the school. I heard second loud bang. I looked for my children who had been on the playground just moments before and met them around the school on the parking lot side where they were gathered with neighbors, friends, and two other children. Thank you. Yes. My name is Ann Wright. I'm here tonight to support his bill on the tree chuck, but also to support my town and its citizens. Before my, I address my concerns, I do want to say thank you to Ken, because you responded to my very first email to the select board, and also to the <coughs> town manager's office and the software for the tonight. And I just want you to know that I'm in my comfort zone standing up here in front of people talking to you, so I'm also going to read from my notes. I have to begin for that. For me, the dog shooting at Green Street School has raised four issues. I'd like to mention three, but I'd like to really focus on the four. The first issue is whether a stray dog is treated in accordance with town ordinances for domestic animals loose without tags, or whether it was destroyed because it was a pit bull. 
which you've already heard Chief Rin, who, um, who said that it appears that the permanent officers may have had contact and or incidents involving this animal in the recent past and the information was not properly forwarded to Animal Control Officer Burroughs to follow up. Given the outcome of the situation, exactly what does that mean? Why did this happen? And who is accountable? The second issue for me is that the police department didn't notify school officials that a possibly rabid dog or a police officer with a shotgun intending to kill the dog was on school grounds while students and others were inside, let alone the fact that there were people outside on the playground when the officer approached the school grounds with a shotgun in his hand. Is this an acceptable action by the police department? I assume that this is going to be addressed, but how will the public be informed? By what mechanism? Is there transparency so we have confidence that this is addressed? The third issue I have is that of contradictions between Chief Prince Memo to you and what I know from the people who were there. Uh, for example, I've been told that there were four people who went to the police department about this incident, but Chief Rin reports only two citizen complaints. I'm curious to know why that is. Then, there are Chief Rin's reports that there were no witnesses, when in fact, as we just heard, that wasn't true. That this woman was close enough to the dog before the second shot was fired, that she feared that she was in danger of being picked herself, and the officer apparently never saw her is truly, truly disturbing to me. And as late as last Friday, when she turned out that menu, that memo, excuse me, to the select board, it still maintains that there were no witnesses, and I'd like to know why that is. The fourth issue that this incident has brought up for me is related, but not specific to the dog shooting, but one I believe is much larger is the issue of engagement and communication in a town that for several years now has had citizens with serious concerns about the questionable judgments and actions by some members of the police department. And this at a time when the environment of downtown continues to deteriorate and the overall safety of citizens and visitors, as well as Bradwell's reputation and ability to continue to draw needed visitors is at risk. While a stray dog is shot on a playground, both petty and violent crime have increased in Brattleboro. Drug trafficking and what used to be thought of as the rough end of Elliott Street has now moved up as far as Main Street. It's a well-known secret and Flat Street with the transportation center is no better. I live close to downtown. I work on Main Street. Several days a week, I walk between home and work, the library, the co-op, or I walk around town for exercise. Last fall, while at work, I saw a man down by the railroad tracks behind the Riverview Cafe repeatedly stomping on what I thought was a garbage bag until the garbage bag tried to crawl away and I realized it was a man. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I walked home from work around 5 o'clock on one of those first summer hot days this spring, just, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, and overheard several young men crowded around a car coming out of the Harmony parking lot. They were talking through the car windows about rounding up groups of young men to go watch a one-on-one, -on -one, they called it. In front of Metropolis, I overheard another young man on his cell phone telling his friend to pick him up to go watch the fight. Nobody paid any attention to the fact that I was overhearing them. They spoke freely and with impunity. I reported both of these incidents to the police. The first was followed up. From the tone of the dispatcher's voice, her line of questioning, and the fact that I couldn't give her any details about where the fight was going to be happening, although I did suggest that she check down somewhere by the railroad tracks because it is known up at the school that there is a fight club down there somewhere. I don't believe that the second that my second call to the police department about that particular incident was ever followed up. My brother-in-law, who works at People's United, told me last winter about an incident that happened to him on the top level of the parking garage. As he was getting into his car to go home in the winter, it was a little bit twilight dusk, he was harassed by people sitting in the car beside him, which he noticed had out-of-state lights. The next morning, he parked his car in the same spot. When he got out, there were needles and drug paraphernalia on the ground beside where the other car had been the night before. 
in the late 90s and early 2000s, for several years, five or six, I think it was, I worked at Peter Havens. Even back then, we used to talk about how some of our customers expressed concern in walking to the restaurant from the Harmony parking lot. For over 10 years, people who live and work downtown have recognized there's a problem. Even so, at that time, I would walk home from work anywhere between 10 and 1 a.m. up to Oak Street. I never felt unsafe. I never felt vulnerable. Now, if I shop at the co-op in the evening, I won't walk up the transportation center stairs once it begins to get dark. I will go up there pretty much at dusk or twilight. In the last decade, our downtown environment has become more and more dangerous, and I'm not referring to the youth, the skateboarders, or the homeless people who call Broadboro home. In addition to the questions that have yet again come out about the judgment and actions of a police officer, this time about this dog shooting, how is it that we can have drug deals and drug use occurring openly in downtown with no increased police presence at all hours of the day as a deterrent and a message? In July 2009, Building a Better Brattleboro posted a meeting between downtown merchants and the police department to address the problems that drinking and drugs were causing downtown. What's changed? I'm asking for two things tonight. I'm requesting that the town manager's office and you, as the body that oversees the town manager, engage an independent, objective third party to investigate the particular questions the dog shooting has raised in this community. There are too many inconsistencies coming out of the police department and having Chief Wren and Captain Fitzgerald, as good as they may be, doing an internal investigation is not a fair and unbiased or an impartial investigation. I'm also asking the town manager's office and the select board to begin a public engagement process to determine what kind of town we want, what kind of communication we want between the police department and its citizens, and what we can do to begin to shift the culture and the mindset of our town government and police department so that it becomes the rule, not the exception, to see police officers walking and biking around downtown, engaging you, the downtown regulars, working people, even our homeless population. Until our police department truly integrates into the community, there will always be a them and a we mentality on both sides. A mentality that undermines trust and understanding and keeps us from being the community we all want Brattleboro to be. Well, thank you. Thank you for your comments, and I will address one issue there at the end. Uh, there, in the past year and a half, there has been an increased police presence downtown uh, on every shift. Uh, officers are required to be downtown and on foot walking around, uh, introducing themselves to community members. Uh, I have certainly can tell you unequivocally that uh, in conversations that I have had with the chief and uh, Captain Fitzpatrick, uh, Fitzgerald. or Fitzgerald, excuse me, I said Fitzpatrick, uh, that uh, that is imperative that it happens. Uh, I'm certainly concerned about all the issues that you have. Uh, the board, actually through its uh, through its budgetary process uh, uh, and several meetings that I had attended, one downtown with BABB, talking about uh, citizens uh, coming to the select board in the financial uh, dur during the budgeting process to make requests to the board for. Uh, increased police presence uh, downtown. It has a huge financial impact. Uh, certainly, we uh, you could go to any community uh, in any state and they're, and they're facing the same issues that we are. That doesn't give us a pass, uh, and I'm well aware of that, and so are, so are my colleagues on the board. Uh, we are engaged uh, in other undercover work and all kinds of other things that the public is not privy to and not all board members are privy to. Uh, we know it's an issue. We know it has an effect on our community. Uh, we go downtown. We want it to be safe for all people, not just females. We want everybody to feel safe, visitors, residents. And so from that aspect, 
we have really increased our presence in downtown uh, in terms of foot patrol, not riding around, making sure our officers are on foot patrolling not only Flat Street, High Street, and Main Street. Thank you. Uh, and Elliott Street, excuse me. Thank you. I do appreciate that. I, I will. I do want to say, from my personal experience in the three and a half years now that I've been working on Main Street and walking to work three days a week, I, uh, the times that I go to work, which is generally eight or eight thirty, that's a pretty that's a pretty calm time. Coming home from work or walking out around at lunchtime, I I work at the co-op, but I don't work at the store. So I'm often between my office and the store. I, in three and a half years, I can count on one hand the time that I have seen officers on patrol downtown in the daytime. As I said, it really concerned me when I heard these boys, late teens, early 20s, at 5 o'clock on, on one of the first hot summer days that we had, having this conversation when the car was pulling right out of the Harmony parking lot, Windows open, young four, five, six young men around the car, four young men in the car, talking openly about this fight up the street, another engagement. Nope, I thought, oh my God, the, the, the streets were teeming with people that day, young people, all kinds of people because of the, um, you know, because of the warm weather, not a cop inside, five o'clock in the afternoon. You wouldn't expect something to happen, but something did. So I do appreciate everything that's going on, and I do know that it is a matter of scarce resources. However, I can tell you that somebody who is from this town, whose mother was from this town, and who has been living downtown for around 15 years, there's definitely a decline going on. I have witnessed it, I have been unhappy with it, and this is the situation that has pushed me. Um, to actually stand up and speak about this. For me, this is a long-term process. This is, I'm not going to just stand up here tonight and talk to you about this one incident. Thank you for being involved. I appreciate you. You, you did quite well, actually. Thank you. Terry?
things are not always in place. And the opportunity we have in implementing this board that we set up for this very specific reason is hopefully on something very, very sad, something good can happen. And that we can draw on the resources and network in a way that, for example, when a stray cat got run over and there was no one around to euthanize this poor animal, this should not happen. Nice when a, a skunk is stuck in a garbage can, citizens can be educated in how to handle it instead of having the policeman come and shoot the animal, assuming it's rabid when it's probably just in it. You know, there's certain symptoms with rabies. I know that's changed everything. But my point is, let's really get this committee in place and really try on our resources and hopefully we can prevent this sort of thing from ever happening, at least for a long, long, long time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Terry. I can't seem to get it 
out of my head. Um, so I just, I just felt I needed to say something about that. Thank you. I would say again that uh, uh, several years ago, you are right, the Brennerboro PD had an image problem. I think that uh, Chief Wren, uh, new to the position, although he's been there for several years, I think our, our police department has made great strides. Uh, they acknowledge the fact that there were some communication issues. Uh, I wish we always got it right every time. I wish I could say the same for myself. I like to believe that I have it right all the time, although I know that I don't. Uh, but uh, one day you're a hero in the police department, and the next day uh, you're under the bus, and it is a difficult, uh, a difficult job. And uh, I have great respect for what they do. And when we have an issue with this, this is a learning experience. Uh, for us, and uh, I can certainly tell you uh, that I've had conversations with both of the gentlemen over to my right about the issue and the learning experience that needs to happen to make sure that that's communicated with the rest of the staff, and I'm fully confident that that's going to happen. Mary? something uh, that happened in, in my own personal history that really concerns me particularly about what happened to you and your concerns because uh, I was a student at UVM and um, this was in the 80s and we actually had um, several incidents on campus that uh, made the establishment make a rule uh, or at least request that um, any single woman who was on campus who had to go from building to building at a late time at night uh, would be escorted. And uh, at, at that particular time, by, by usually a young man, because we had several instances on campus at that time that were, were uh, disastrous. And um, I would like to propose that we um, at least entertain that issue and make it very clear that if there's a single woman who needs to have an escort, that they can call the police department or whatever particular group that you decide. Because when I came in 1996 to Vermont, we uh, got involved, I, I got involved with, um, and, and she friend might be aware of this, I think it was a little before his time, but um, he was probably around here, uh, a neighborhood watch group that uh, the uh, drug task force from Rutland came here to Brattleboro to discuss about and how they had cracked on a lot of the drug crime. And it was through neighborhood watches. And if that's what we have to do, we have to do this. I, I can't stand up here enough to tell you. We have to listen. This is vitally important. We have people here who are telling us things that we need to pay attention to. These are lies at stake. We not only just the children, which is horrible in itself, but adults who are actually communicating to us very directly that they're concerned, they're scared, and they need to have someone step up to the So I request that we, like we've done in the past, we have had um, different groups that have said that they would come to step up to the plate and indicate that they could help in certain ways if we can get together some sort of committee that we would able, be able to, maybe through the churches or through, through just your organizations or the firemen, to escort for sure. If there's a call, if there's a concern, that they can go. Because you've got to start to the next and, and, and definitely staffing is, is a challenge and cost is a challenge. But there are people in the neighborhood that would be willing, I'm confident of this, to make sure that you or me as a single woman can safely walk and not after work. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else? I just can I just speak from here? Go ahead and just come back up. Okay. Microphone. Microphone. I just wanted to ask the question, since this incident happened, have have they dealt with it in the school? Have they gone in and done some sort of grief counseling or some sort of counseling with kids that witnessed it or family? I'm unaware. 
I'm unaware of that action. Has anything happened to the school? No. So maybe as maybe I could suggest that if nothing else comes out of this, that there's we can't make it go away. It's not going to go away. So maybe there's a way that we could um, talk to the teachers, talk, bring everybody together, bring the police officers in, bring the teacher, do something. I don't know what I'm really what I could suggest, but I think something has there has to be some some sort of closure here. And I'll, I'll be at Green Street School tomorrow you uh, for. Okay. Uh, presentation. I can talk to the administration. That would be great. Thank I think that I think the I think the families need answers. Thank you. Honestly. All right. Thank you. Seeing no one else, is there any comment by any board members? Uh, Dora. Dora. Well, I just want to say just to follow up on what Mary was saying. Um, there is a neighborhood association that has started with Elliott Street, that, uh, and I just want to say that both um, Captain Fitzgerald and, and Chief Wren have been involved in helping organize that um, from the beginning, and we put together a survey for the Elliott Street, Elm Street, Flat Street Triangle. Um, it's being called feet. So, um, and, and, and it, we've really gotten a lot of people involved and they're really excited about it. And, um, you know, just from a positive note from what Mary was saying, um, they've been very supportive and very responsive to some of the, the to, 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 to concerns and to issues and in helping um, that, that organization get started and I you know I just want to thank them for that and I wanted to put that out there for people because Mary did bring that up and um, so so and there's been active neighborhood associations in other areas of town uh, over the last several years uh, first and foremost thank you for coming uh, you walk into this room it's a small room but it's actually quite intimidating uh, when you're on that side and you're not used to it. And I can tell you I get nervous every now and then sitting up here and I've been here for seven years. Uh, uh, this is an unfortunate incident that happened. It's a correctable uh, situation. It's, excuse me, it's a teachable moment. Uh, I have confidence in our chief and I think our board does uh, unequivocally and uh, our staff. Uh, we have really made great strides in the time that I've been on the board. Uh, I wish that everything happened uh, perfectly and I wish we, we could, every time we responded to an incident, uh, I wish that everything happened and we wouldn't have any questions and we wouldn't need to have police officers. Uh, uh, this will be going to the CPCC. The, actually, the chief requested uh, that they review this and also citizens requested that uh, this go to CPCC uh, we'll and we'll get the location out uh, in ample time uh, and uh, further discussion will be had uh, you know the issues that Dora just talked about and certainly Mary uh, neighborhood watches we have made appeals uh, for not just the downtown streets but every neighborhood uh, we need the community. If we want to save community, we all need to participate. It's easy to say, we need this. When we say we, that means you're volunteering. When you make the recommendation for something, I'm going to be the first one that signs on the dotted line to be a neighborhood watch or whatever the action is. If we want to save community, we have to take it back. I see the same people. Do I see the same demographics in our town that I saw here two years ago? I see a different demographic. Not that they're all bad people, but the demographics are changing, and some not for the good. And so to take the community back, it takes the community. You see what our resources are? We have a police force of uh, 28 people, and it's to cover us... Uh, Seven, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We have a big community. And so we need the citizens to participate. You can call the TIPS hotline. You can call in things. Uh, and that's important that that happens. The more eyes, the more things that we see, we can respond to. Uh, it's important for you and the people at home watching uh, that, uh, you know, just 
just get involved. Just get involved. And it's for us, it's year round too. Uh, it's not just in the summer. Uh, so thank you for coming. And I appreciate all your comments. And I know my fellow board members do also. And uh, we'll see some of you at the CPCC meeting on May 15th. Thank you.